Yo, what's up guys? It's Dune North, and today we will be talking about the official mascot of PlayStation, Toro Inoue from Doko Demoisio, who just happens to be the little goober you see dancing on screen right now. Toro Inoue is a video game icon in Japan, being Sony's official mascot in the country. He's appeared in many PlayStation advertisements throughout the country of Japan, basically becoming a household name in the Japanese PlayStation market. However, due to not only the character's obscurity in North America, Europe, and Australia, but also the PlayStation market being very niche in Japan, Toro Inoue hasn't gotten a game on a PlayStation console since the PlayStation 3. It's getting to the point where Toro and the Doko Demo Isio series are dwindling into obscurity. It's almost as if we need a heroic YouTuber popular in both Japan and the West who can get people talking about Doko Demo Isio again in the hopes that PlayStation can release a new Doko Demo Isio game. Well, guess what? That hero just happens to be Shirakami Fubuki, who recently played Toro on Holiday, Toro Inoue's PlayStation 2 outing on her stream. That is going to be the topic of today's video. If you guys like this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Let's get into it. So going deeper into Toro's character, he debuted in 1997 on the PlayStation 1 game, um, Doko Demo Isio, and... You know, to be PlayStation's mascot, you kind of have to have debuted on the first PlayStation. It kind of, it just makes sense that way. Um, and most people in the West know Toro exclusively from PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. But as someone who has a lot of interest in obscure video game characters and obscure games in general, I saw Toro as a very interesting case and basically had to look into his character only to find out he's pretty much PlayStation's official mascot. Um, he's appeared in multiple games throughout the PlayStation 1, 2, and 3 library. I believe he appeared on some handheld games too. Um, but sadly, recently, his only appearances in video games have been mobile games, which I think is really silly. Because if he's PlayStation's official mascot, he should be appearing on PlayStation. He shouldn't be appearing on mobile games. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and I guess now, with the PlayStation 5, um, Sony is kind of aiming their mascot to be Astro from Astro's Playroom, that built-in PS5 game. I guess they're kind of pushing that character to be that... That, that just seems like a very weird choice for a mascot. I do think in order to be PlayStation's mascot, similar to Nintendo and how Mario is Nintendo's mascot, Mario appeared on the very first Nintendo console, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Him being one of the OGs is one of the reasons he's the number one Nintendo character and Nintendo's mascot. So if you translate this over to PlayStation, it would make sense for PlayStation's official mascot to be a character that debuted on the first PlayStation, and that's what Toro Inoue did. You know, Xbox's mascot is Steve from Minecraft, and he didn't really debut on an Xbox console until the Xbox 360, so there's that to take into account. He wasn't on the first Xbox. Um, but Toro Inoue, I think because he is one of the OGs, he really should um, be PlayStation's official mascot, and not just in Japan, but all over the world too. I think that's for the best, so that way he can become a more worldwide recognized name. I think that would be really cool. And another thing is, a lot of people watching this video may not know who Shirakami Fubuki is. And I'll go into it in as simple of terms as possible because she's done a lot in her YouTube career and I don't want to go into every single thing she's done. I'll just go into the basics as to who she is, just enough so you can understand what's going on in this video. Um, essentially, Fubuki, most people just call her Fubuki. Um, Fubuki is from Hololive and... She's a, she was essentially grad not graduate. She essentially debuted in the first generation of Holo Live VTubers, and she's a, supposed to be like a fox girl essentially. Um, I forgot the names of the other VTubers she debuted alongside. It'll probably it'll probably it'll probably come to me eventually, but she was one of them, and she's definitely my favorite of that first generation because I think she's really cool, um, very cool personality. Um, 
But then again, because she does speak Japanese, I don't always know exactly what she's saying. I don't really watch Japanese videos with captions, but but I I do watch her streams occasionally, and she does speak Japanese, and because of this, during her Toro on Holiday um, stream, and because she labeled it as number one, she's probably going to be doing multiple streams, during her Toro on Holiday stream, I didn't always know every single thing that was going on. Um, even without speaking Japanese, I could kind of understand some situations her and Toro were getting into, because with the Japanese text, the Japanese speech, I couldn't understand everything they were saying, but I could understand some situations. Like, I could understand the situation where Fubuki was talking about her PlayStation 2 memory card, which, which off topic, but I think is kind of, it's kind of novelty to hear an anime girl hear, hear her say the word memory card because anime girls are supposed to be like more modern right and memory cards are basically a relic of older video game consoles so you don't really hear them say that word all the time so it, it, it just kind of seemed very it seemed very interesting to me i don't know but but i digress um there was also another instance like close to the end of the stream where there was like a horror section it wasn't really a horror section but because fubuki has played horror games in the past she thought it was like there was going to be a jump scare or something there were like ex the, her and toro were exploring this abandoned park where they looked at like a mailbox and fubuki thought there was going to be like a spooky face that just jumped out at you i'm like fubuki this is a children's game on the playstation 2 there is not going to be a goblin head popping out of a mailbox like you would see in some pc horror game that you download for five bucks on steam uh, <laughs> it's not one of the games you'd see cub scouts playing or so, like something like that it's not something like that no it's a it's a classic game with a classic video game mascot it's not going to be something like that and and there were some other situations i could understand kind of what was going on too there was this one scene where toro was like in this hot spring and fubuki made a joke about like yagu peeping on people i don't know it, it was there was a lot of situations that happened in that stream because because the game is called toro on holiday it's essentially supposed to showcase toro's vacation to another japanese city in a way um so there's a lot of things that Toro does and goes around the city doing different things that you, you kind of have to understand. But it, it's it's kind of, it, it, there's a lot of situations, I don't remember every single thing he did, but those were the main three instances of situations that I do remember that stuck out to me as I knew what they did. I want to talk about why it is so hype that Fubuki played Toro on Holiday. Now, I said this in the beginning of the video. Well, close to the beginning. I said this close to the beginning of the video. Um, Toro Inoue is starting to fall into the depths of obscurity. And as a character who used to be PlayStation's official mascot, obscurity is not something you want to fall into. Um, but this is kind of because, it's also kind of because, you know, PlayStation has had multiple mascots. It's just that Toro, and Toro was only considered one in Japan. I don't know, but Toro, I do think, deserves the spot. Um, but he's falling into obscurity, despite having icon status. And Fubuki, like I said, despite her being Japanese, she's both popular in Japan and the West. So, her playing a game with a character that has fallen into obscurity because not only Japanese people didn't know who he was if they played Nintendo, but also Nin Americans have no idea who he was before PlayStation All-Stars. These two things combined make it very good that Fubuki played a Toro Inoue game, specifically Toro on Holiday, because she is showcasing a forgotten character in video games and because of her big following, that is something that she genuinely needed to do at some point. Because literally more people need to have their eyes on Toro Inoue and the Doko Demoisio series because it is falling into obscurity and we need to revive it as best as we can. But, uh... <laughs> I think there's someone else who could also help. Toro Inoue 
jump out of the obscurity rabbit hole and gain worldwide status. And that's Mr. Beast. For Mr. Beast's Ultra Reality Smash Bros. server, also titled Wonder Project, via the, the B721 leaks, I want to talk about how Fubuki playing Toro on Holiday relates to Mr. Beast's Ultra Reality Smash Bros. server. I think Mr. Beast, for the original roster of 80, is going to add, one of the characters he's going to add is going to be Toro Inoue. Think about it. Toro is an icon. He is a very famous character in Japan and, well, was, but he still kind of is. He still has that kind of, those these remnants of icon status. Um, so I think he definitely deserves a spot. But then you have these people who are like, oh, but, you know, why would Nintendo allow a PlayStation's mascot to, to be, in, be in Smash? You do realize Nintendo and PlayStation had it out. They were butting heads with each other. Wackety, wackety, whoop. Hear me out, all right? I get that Toro wasn't in Smash Ultimate for that reason. However... Mr. Beast Ultra Reality Smash Bros. server is going to have a ton of companies outside Nintendo's jurisdiction that are going to be helping with it. Yes, I know that Bandai Namco and some other companies helped with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, but that was just one company. Whereas, to make an Ultra Reality Smash Bros. server, you need a wide range of companies that do a variety of things all coming together for this one thing. And I think because of that, Toro Inoue, like Mr. Beast can use these non-Nintendo connections to get Toro Inoue in Nintendo's staple fighting game franchise in Ultra Reality. And I think that is a very possible thing. And the other thing I want to talk about is now that we know that Mr. Beast's Ultra Reality Smash Bros. server is going under this working title called Wonder Project, um, now we kind of know, it's kind of been confirmed that Mr. Beast's Ultra Reality Smash Bros. server is going to have this dream theming to it. A lot of people um, have noticed throughout Smash's lifetime that there are very deep connections with the Kirby series given that Smash literally was created by the same guy who made Kirby. Um, and just the way the physics work, a lot of the characters and their source material, how they, some a lot of their source material also plays on the theme of dreaming and stuff like that. People have noticed that throughout the Smash Bros. series, there has been this dream theme going on. And Mr. Beast calling it Wonder Project, I think, solidifies that it's going to have a dream theming. Um, I don't know if he got the name Wonder Project from somewhere like Super Mario Bros. Wonder, or I don't know where he got it from, but he got it from something like that. Um, and Toro Inoue, I believe, fits perfectly with the dream theming, because he kind of exists in this... He kind of exists in this world that's like reality, except there's colorful, cute mascot characters that you can have as pets. You know, in the real world, you kind of have just normal cats, normal dogs, and some people have other animals as pets. Uh, but you don't really have these mascots, these lovable mascot characters you see in Doko Demo Isio. But Doko Demo Isio has them. So, because it's because Doko Demo Isio is essentially an AU of the real world, I think it does kind of fit in with the dream theme. And that means Toro would fit perfectly into Mr. Beast's Ultra Reality Smash Bros. server, which I think would be really, really cool. But regardless, I do think it is cool that Fubuki played Toro on Holiday. Like I said earlier in the video, Toro on Holiday is Toro Inoue's vacation outing on the PlayStation 2. Sadly, Toro on Holiday doesn't seem to be able to work on Western PlayStation 2 systems. So if you want to play it in the West, you have a couple of options, but they're probably very obscure options. So maybe if you do want to play some Doko Demo Isio games, get a PlayStation 2 fat from Japan and get the discs for Toro on Holiday and the PS1 Toro Inoue games too and do it that way. It's a very obscure thing to do and probably costs a lot of money, but I don't know. Maybe there's emulation options. I don't know. But regardless, Fabuki playing Toro on Holiday is hype. 
Thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, and as always, stay chill everyone.